How to sound smart in your emails is something you've probably asked yourself at some stage in your career. And it's a great question because your emails really are an extension of your professional image. If you want people at work to see you as smart, intelligent, and competent, then you really need to showcase this in your emails, in your in-person interactions as well. But this video will solely focus on your emails. I'm gonna share with you five ways you can appear smart in your emails. Now, if you like what you're going to learn in this video and you wanna help support my channel and help it grow, then make sure you hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell as well so you can be notified every time I release a new video. Every week I release videos on leadership to help you on your leadership journey and I would be honored to have you a part of this community. Now, let's get straight into the email tips. Number one, use correct spelling, punctuation, and grammar. You're probably not surprised that this is the number one tip I am talking about that's because it is paramount to your success in writing smart and intelligent emails. But reality is a lot of people still make these simple mistakes in their emails. Most of the time it's through lack of time or simply lack of attention, lack of proofreading really. But let me ask you, how can you expect people to see you as smart, intelligent or competent as a professional if you have these simple mistakes in your emails? In order to sound smart in your emails at work, you really need to make sure there are no mistakes when it comes to spelling, punctuation, or grammar. Now, I know you watching this video, you are very educated and it's likely that you know what the correct spelling, punctuation, and grammar is you need to use in your emails. So I'm not going to go into that in this video, but what I will talk about is proofreading your emails and the importance of proofreading. This is something that a lot of people skip over and don't do. Like I said before, mostly because they lack the time and they don't have the attention or the mental space in order to do that. But if you spend one to two minutes proofreading your email, the entire email before you send it, you can pick up a lot of those spelling, punctuation, or grammatical mistakes. And you can really change the perception that other people will get of you when you send them an email. Proofreading really helps your emails to look smart. If you're ever unsure about the correct spelling, the correct punctuation, or the correct grammar that you need to use in an email, then Google is your best friend here. There are many resources online that will help you learn and understand the correct punctuation, spelling, or grammar you need to use. Grammarly is also another great resource. Uh, this video is not sponsored by Grammarly, by the way, but it is a resource that I commonly use to just double check on grammar issues or even punctuation issues. Another thing you need to be aware of is the difference between UK and US spelling, punctuation, and grammar for your emails. There are many differences when it comes to spelling, punctuation, and grammar between the US style that's used and the UK or the British style that is used. A lot of people are unaware of this and quite often it can result in somebody thinking you have written an email or spelt a word incorrectly when you haven't. Now, I have a fantastic example of this. In one of my Udemy courses, one of the students of the course wrote a review and said that I spelt the word jewelry incorrectly in that course. So I spelt the word jewelry like this instead of jewelry like this. And this caused that person to think that I had spelt it incorrectly when really I was using the UK style or the British style of spelling the word. And I would say they were used to the US style. So they thought I was spelling incorrectly when I wasn't. So this is just an example of how people can be really unaware of the differences between US and UK style when it comes to spelling and also punctuation and grammar. A lot of people think there are only differences when it comes to spelling between US and UK style, but that's not true. There are many differences when it comes to punctuation and also grammar. Some punctuation differences, I'm gonna go through them with you now, really appears when it comes to writing letters or addressing people in an email. So say you're starting an email and you say, Hi Jennifer or Dear Ms. Brown. If you are using US style punctuation to address somebody in an email, you would put a colon at the end, a colon after Hi Jennifer or Dear Ms. Brown. Whereas if you're using UK style for your punctuation and addressing someone in an email, you would put a comma after both of these examples. Another punctuation difference between US UK style is the serial comma or otherwise known as the Oxford comma. So this is a comma that's placed before the last item in a list of three or more things. Using US style, here's an example. I compiled the figures for April, May and June. You would place the comma before and. 
So I compiled the figures for April, comma, May, comma, and June. But using UK style, you don't put a comma before the and, and it would look like this. I compiled the figures for April, comma, May, and June. So these are a couple of differences when it comes to punctuation between US and UK style. Now these are important for you to remember, mostly so that you know you are using the right style depending on whether you use UK English or US English. And it's also important so you don't assume or so you don't think somebody else has made a mistake when they haven't. The next step to writing smart emails is to use commas appropriately. Now sometimes people in their writing, they use commas too much, sometimes way too too much. And other times people don't use commas enough and completely change the meaning of the sentence. Let's take this example. Let's go eat John compared to let's go eat John. Both sentences use the exact same words. The only difference is the comma. One appears with a comma, one appears without a comma. The one with the comma makes the sentence sound like we actually want to eat with John. We want to go to a restaurant and eat with John. The other sentence without the comma sounds like we want to eat John. Can you see how a simple comma can drastically change the meaning of a sentence? And this can happen in your emails too. So especially if you are writing something that is more on the legal side or something that's more on the technical side, you really need to be very careful about the use of your commas and make sure that adding a comma or eliminating a comma does not change the meaning of your sentence or the meaning of your email. So when should commas be used? Commas are used to separate two independent clauses that are joined by coordinating junctions such as like, but, or and. For example, I reviewed the financial report you sent me yesterday, but there are a few corrections I need to make before I return it to you. The comma in this example separates the first clause of the sentence from the second clause of the sentence. Here's another example. Jennifer discussed the issue with our client and they're on board with our decision. So again, the comma here separates the two different clauses. Commas are really important in your email writing. They make it easier for the other person to read your email and to understand what you're saying. Commas are very similar to using the pause in your verbal communication. So if you're ever confused about where you should put a comma, think about how you would say that sentence verbally to somebody. Where would you put the pause? And the place where you would put the pause is where you can put a comma instead. Use active, not passive language. So what do I mean by passive and active language? Well, passive language or the passive voice is where you put the object of an action as the subject of the sentence. Imagine it's written like this, object, verb, subject. For example, the cat was caught by the dog. In this example, the subject is the dog. The dog was the one who did the catching and the object was the cat. The cat was the one caught by the dog. So this structure using the passive voice is very common and it's likely that this sentence I just shared with you is very familiar to you. It's used often in technical writing, in scientific writing to use the objective voice in your writing. The passive voice is also used a lot in formal writing because it makes your writing sound more indirect. When it's more indirect, it tends to sound more polite. But for many people in business, especially when it comes to emails, they much prefer when people use the active voice. So I'll share an example of the active voice with you. Using the same example I shared before about the cat and the dog, in an active voice, this is what the sentence would sound like. The dog caught the cat. Instead of the cat was caught by the dog. Sharing this simple example, do you see how the active voice sounds a lot more direct and straightforward than the passive voice does? So the active voice is much preferred in emails, mostly because it leads to clearer writing and clearer understanding for your reader. Less room for a misunderstanding. It helps you write clearer sentences as well and more precise arguments. Here are a couple more examples of passive versus the active voice when it comes to emails and these examples are more work related. The report was filed by John or John filed the report. The meeting was led by Anna or 
Anna led the meeting. Do you see the difference between these two examples and how the active voice can sound a lot clearer, a lot more precise, a lot more direct and a lot less room for misunderstanding? I think the biggest reason that the active voice is preferred in business emails is mostly because business people are busy. They don't have the time to waste trying to read lengthy emails and trying to find out what the indirect message is actually saying to them. They want things to be told to them directly, precisely and quickly. And the active voice will definitely help you achieve this. Number five, be as brief as possible. Forget what you learn at university or at college, that longer sentences and longer paragraphs will make you sound smart. The only thing longer sentences and longer paragraphs will do is force your reader to spend more time reading your email. In business, clarity and speed are key. When you write with brevity, you don't waste words and you don't waste people's time. So brevity is your friend when you are writing emails. Here are four keys that you need to remember. Keep your sentences short, use fewer paragraphs, eliminate unnecessary words, and write like you're talking to a friend. So instead of writing, in response to your previous email and after careful consideration of the arguments you presented in support of the corporate function being held at Red Rooster, I have discussed with my team and the group preference is for the corporate function to be held at Chicken Treat. So for this message, for the core message that you wanna convey in this paragraph or in these few sentences, this is way too long for an email. The core message could have been said in a much simpler way using fewer words and shorter sentences. Something like this. Thanks for your email. I've talked with my team and we all prefer for the corporate function to be held at Chicken Treat and not Red Rooster. If you are from Australia and you're familiar with Red Rooster and Chicken Treat, you're probably chuckling at the thought of a corporate function being held at either of these places. If you're not from Australia, then I'll explain what these restaurants are. Chicken Treat and Red Rooster are both casual restaurants where you can get chicken and chips, not the kind of place where you'd have a corporate function. So sounding smart in your emails is not about picking up a dictionary and finding the most complicated words you can to put in your email or making your sentences as long as you possibly can. What it's about writing smart emails is about being concise, getting straight to the point, being direct and making it easier for your reader to understand what your core message is. If you can do this, then you will look smart in your emails. If you liked what you learned in this video and you want more videos like this in your feed to elevate yourself as a leader, then make sure you subscribe by hitting the button below this video and the notification bell as well so you can be notified every time I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I will share another video on the screen with you that you can watch after this one and I will see you in the next one.